Okay, uh, we're at the Super League launch for Super League 14, joined by Sean McRae. Um, Sean, it's the official start to the season. You must be looking forward to it by this stage of week out. Very much so. We've had a terrific build up, um, had our squad in, in shape for, for some time now. Been a few little problems at the start of the year in terms of World Cup players coming back into, uh, into training. They needed some recovery. Some of our overseas signings, of course, were a little bit later, they were a little bit delayed, but we've had our pretty much had our full-time squad uh, of 28 players back in training since um, the start of January. Uh, Jacksonville was terrific for us in terms of being able to get everyone together and being able to do what we needed to do. And um, the games we've played, I've, I've seen improvement uh, each game we've played and uh, we're ready to start the season. So obviously Jacksonville, warm weather training. Has the weather since you've returned hampered you any? Because it's not been brilliant, has it, Sean? Well, <laughs> getting outside's a problem. I mean, you can, you can, you can take players out and, ask them to plough through snow and, you know, drop down and get their noses a bit wet and everything. But, you know, like a dog in there's, an old, there's, an, yeah, there's an old theory that that kind of toughens people up, but I think those guys are tough enough. I think you've got to be more realistic and there's a fair bit of science attached to games now and, you know, and practices and what you do. So we've been able to u utilise some indoor facilities and some artificial, um, artificial uh, turf type pitches and um, we've, been, we've been fairly fortunate in what we've had available to us. So we've tried to simulate a lot of our training uh, in what I would call extreme conditions. It's been, it's been very, very difficult to get on actual plane surfaces and, and do a lot of work. But uh, I suspect everyone's been in the same boat, so I don't think we're at a disadvantage there at all. Indeed. And um, you're playing the game against Hull Power tomorrow, hopefully, weather permitting. As a warm-up, really, Celtic Crusaders due to play to the Leeds Rhinos. It was important, you felt, to get a game under your belt against a tough quality opposition, which Hull Cow undoubtedly are. Yeah, oh, Hull Cow are a very good side, there's no doubt about it. They've, uh, they've recruited well, uh, they've, they've, obviously, um, they've obviously got a, a good structure there, good organisation. They, they spend maximum salary cap, which enables them to, to, uh, to attract some big names to the club. Uh, they've just, they've just finalised a, a new training uh, complex and uh, they're, they're very much on the up and up. And, they had a terrific win uh, just last week against the Warrington Wolves at at, uh, at Warrington, so they look like they're in pretty good shape. So they'll be a great test for us. And you know, again, I'd point out I wouldn't have played this game if Celtic if Celtic weren't playing Leeds uh, a week before. If Celtic were playing us, we, I would have been happy with the three games we'd have played. But I just feel we need this game to to sort of top our levels up and make sure that we've got everything right. Element of risk in terms of injury, but that's you could say the same about every game you're playing. So hopefully we get through that. That's. It's always it's funny about coaches. We always talk about getting through a game injury free, but we talk more about it in pre-season. So uh, um, it's always one of the first things we say after the match. Well, at least we came through that okay. Yeah. And again, I'd, I'd point out it's not necessarily the result that's important. We want to play well, but um, more importantly, come through it and uh, have some confidence going into uh, going into the following week's match. And then obviously the week after the show begins so in earnest, really. Celtic Crusade is not a team you were unfamiliar with last year, played them about 12 times. Mm. How do you think they'll change in terms of what you'll have to come up against with the Crusaders if obviously recruits some new players? It's a Super League game now, there's going to be a lot of attention on the first game, Reds versus Celtic. Yeah, well the pivotal players, they've actually increased dramatically in what, who they've got because the, the Jace Van Dykes, uh, halfback and standoff Dam uh, Damian Quinn, the hooker Neil Budworth are still at the club, but they've also recruited Lincoln Withers, who I don't think will play in the first game against Leeds. He may play against us. They've also got Matty Smith, who's a, who's the heir apparent to Sean Long at uh, at St Helens. He's on a on a permanent loan arrangement for 12 months. So they've actually recruited very well in their in their pivotal type players. So I expect they'll be very strong there. Um, there's a lot of other players there uh, up front that they've got from overseas. Um, of course, they've they've probably made something like nine or ten signings, and uh, all the signings they've made are very good players. How quickly they assimilate into that organisation, of course, is um, you know, that's really for, uh, up to people to guess. I, I really don't know whether they have or they haven't. Uh, they've, had some, they've had a few little hiccups with getting players in on visas, but they're all arrived now. So, um, you know, I, look, I think they're a pretty strong organisation. I think they're on, they'll be a tough side to beat no matter where you go. And last year we saw plenty of fight in them. You know, we, we end up coming out 3-2, I think, in the, uh, the win-loss ratio. But you saw the grand final was a great game of rugby league. And... It was 20 seconds away from full time when they had the game 1 18 16 um, or 16 14 or something like that. So um, it just, I, would, I don't mind tight, close games as long as we win them. So uh, 
when we play them on Valentine's Day, uh, let's hope we can repeat that. And to finish up Super League, obviously in general, do you think it stands to be a, as, as good a competition as before? Oh, absolutely. I think we've got a we've got a situation now where crowds are up, TV ratings are up, more, more media exposure. Um, guys are doing the job on the field, and I think a lot of things off the field happen because of what's happening on the field. It's a wonderful product, you know. I still say it's one of the world's kept, uh, sorry, one of the world's kept secrets. You know, rugby league. It's a tremendous game to to uh, to support, to follow, and to be involved in. And I think that Super League uh, for this year, Super League 14. Um, there's no reason why it can't be uh, bigger than it's ever been before. And I think if the interest that's now been shown in, in, in the off-season and pre-season, um, I think that uh, we're, gonna, we're, in for a, we're in for a particularly good season. I think the licensing has created interest. I think we're seeing teams that are getting closer to, to getting into that big four, you know, that we always used to talk about Leeds and St Helens and Wigan and Bradford. But we're seeing sides now who are capable of, of knocking one of them off their perch or even two of them away from things. So uh, that's a... I think that's a combination of, of, uh, of uh, the salary cap starting to, starting to have an effect and uh, also I think the licensing agreement, um, the licensing uh, process that we're going to go through, we'll, we'll, see it, uh, we'll see that have a big effect on it as well. So I think not just me, but I think everyone's looking forward to a great season. Fantastic. Well, cheers, Sean. Good luck as ever. And uh, we'll see you as the season goes on. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Paul.